as you unholster your weapon, your thumb should automatically click off that safety right there. And then, howdy folks, you're watching Deuce, and today we're going to talk about Longmire. More specifically, we're talking about the handguns that all the characters in Longmire carry. If you're not familiar with Longmire, it's a pretty good TV show. It's been off the air for a few years. You can still find it on Netflix, I think maybe Amazon, I don't know. And it's a fantastic Western uh, mystery style show. And each person, each individual on the, uh, the sheriff's department carries a different type of firearm. And the firearm they carry says something very, very valuable about that character. So let's go through them all and talk about them. Let's start the show off with Walt Longmire. He's the sheriff of the town. He has been a sheriff for a very long time and he's very set in his ways. He will not, he refuses to get a cell phone. He will not upgrade his equipment unless it just absolutely is in dire circumstances. This is why he carries a standard capacity 1911. It's a Colt 1911, very old school, seven or eight round capacity, 45 ACP. That's all he carries. He does have a rifle as well, but not all of them utilize rifles on the show. So we're sticking to handguns only today, except for the wild card at the end of the show. He carries his 1911 in a very controversial way. First of all, he has an open top holster. It's a nice leather holster that is a paddle holster. So he can take it on and off his belt at will if he's gonna sit down or whatever. And he does not have a top strap on it. There is nothing holding that 1911 in there except for the friction between the pistol and the leather, and that is it. Furthermore, he carries in condition two, which is not something I would recommend for a law enforcement officer to do. The condition to carry for a 1911 would be a full seven or eight round magazine. I'm assuming, I'm assuming he has a seven round magazine because he's so old school. And he has the hammer down and one in the chamber. That is basically condition two for a 1911. Normally, what I would recommend for a law enforcement officer, if you're going to be shooting or using a 1911, would be one in a pipe, full magazine. You'd want to cock the hammer and put on the safety. The main theory why Longmire carries in condition two with the hammer down is mainly because he wants an extra beat, that extra time to assess the situation before he fires his gun. Personally, I think that is a poor excuse because a professional police officer, a sheriff, what have you, if they are good at their job, they'll be able to not fire the pistol until they fully assess the situation, regardless of where their hammer is located. And by the way, would you look at that holster? The holster I'm using today is sold by a company called Craft Holsters. And I came across them online and I thought that reminds me of the Walt Longmire holster. It's not exactly like Walt's holster, but it is close enough to inspire me to make this video. I will do a full review of this holster later on in another video. Let's go ahead and demo how Longmire has it set up here. Put on my ears. Okay, so full magazine, chamber around, drop the hammer, back in the holster. Of course, he would top off that magazine as well, so he has all seven rounds plus one in the chamber. And I got steel down target. Let's go ahead and shoot this. Bad guy comes after him. Done. Is that the best way to carry it? I don't think so. My preferred method of carrying a 1911 would be one in the chamber, full magazine, hammer cocked back, safety on. As you unholster your weapon, your thumb should automatically click off that safety right there. And then, boom. Safety back on, pistol back in the beautiful craft holster. Next up, Deputy Vic Moretti. Vic Moretti is a fish out of water. You kind of see the town through her eyes because everything has to be explained to her since she is new to the area. She is a former homicide detective in Philadelphia, PA. So she's from the big city. She has big city tactics and she's been thrown through a series of circumstances. She's been thrown into a very small Western town. So because of her history from the big city, she has brought her big city tactics, including her pistol, which is a Glock 19. The Glock 19 is not a normal service weapon 
for most officers. Usually they're gonna be carrying a Glock 22 or a Glock 17. I brought out my Glock 22 because I do not have a Glock 17, nor do I have a Glock 19. I'm assuming they decided to use a Glock 19 because she is a small statured woman and a Glock 22 or Glock 17 would just be over overpowering in her hands. So Glock 19 fits her really well and looks good on camera. The reason why you typically don't have a bunch of different types of Glocks on the same police force, even if they're all chambered in the same nine millimeter round, is because the Glock 17 magazine will fit in a Glock 19, it'll just stick out of the bottom, but the magazine for a Glock 19 is too short to seat into a Glock 17. And if you look carefully, you will see that she carries her pistol in a very heavy duty service holster, which is what you'd expect from a big city cop. Deputy Moretti, she of course carries that Glock. She's gonna have a full Glock magazine with one in the chamber, and she's gonna holster that just like that. There is no external safety on a Glock. It's just ready to rock and roll anytime you need to. So if there's a bad guy, she's gonna unholster it, go on target, and take care of the problem, and then reholster. There's no external safety to mess with or worry about. Deputy Branch Conley. He is a fascinating character, let me tell you. Okay, number one, he is running for sheriff. He wants to overthrow Walt Longmire and become sheriff of the town. He doesn't want to be sheriff. <laughs> deputy Conley does not want to be deputy. He does not want to be in law enforcement whatsoever. He's doing the whole thing to please his dad. His father wants to be the boss hog of the town. So if his son is sheriff, then he can get a lot more done a lot quicker. So that's the whole idea. Branch Conley does not want to be in law enforcement whatsoever. And his pistol, he carries a Smith & Wesson Sigma. That is one of the cheapest Glock looking pistols on the market. It's not a high point, but it is pretty dang close in price. In my mind, the Smith & Wesson Sigma says one thing. He went to the gun store and said, I'm gonna be a deputy, give me the cheapest pistol you've got. And they gave him this. And if you look at the holster he's got, it's not even made for this. It's a cheap knockoff holster for something else. So they handed him the pistol and then he said, oh crap, I've got to have a holster for this as well. What will you throw in for free? And they gave him this like cheap piece of crap garbage holster that barely holds his pistol in place. Deputy Branch Conley, I'm not sure if he ever fires his pistol, ever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember a single episode where he pulled the trigger on his pistol. But if he were to, he would more than likely have it unchambered and maybe even not even a bullet in the magazine, who knows? But he's gonna have a probably full magazine, hopefully, and he'll probably have to pull out the pistol, chamber the round, and then go to town. Is that the way he actually kept his pistol? I have no idea. He never shot the pistol on the show from my best recollection. I'm sure he probably did at some point. Remind me in the comments below, please. Deputy Archie Ferguson. He goes by the nickname Ferg, F-E-R-G. I didn't know he had a first name either, but apparently it's Archie or Archibald. I'm not sure which one is correct. But good old Ferg, he carries a Smith & Wesson Model 29 revolver chambered in 44 Magnum. This tells me a lot, especially if you combine that with his general attitude about life and the vehicle he drives. He's had a rough time through high school and he's trying to make up from lost time. I do not have a 44 Magnum. I do have this 357 Magnum that's a snub nose. He's got a full, I think it's either a four or six inch barrel 44 Magnum. It's a pretty hefty piece of machinery. And that choice of revolver says one thing to me. He went into the gun shop saying, hey, I'm gonna be a deputy of the sheriff's department. I need the biggest gun you've got. And I said, son, you need a 44 Magnum. And he grabbed it and he ran with it. He wears it very well. He's, he's a big boy, so a big revolver does fit his frame very nicely. It's a, a little overkill for most, if not all situations that a sheriff's department is gonna come across, but the 44 Magnum is a formidable cartridge and pistol. His vehicle of choice is a 79 Firebird, which, it's a cool car, but not very practical, just like his sidearm choice. It is a cool 
option, but not very practical. But if you combine them together, the story that comes to my mind is he was probably bullied in high school. He's an overweight person. He's not exactly a take charge type of mentality. So combine it all together, he was probably, he probably feels like he's gone through life getting the crap into the stick. And when he got his job as a sheriff's deputy, he wants to be the cool guy. He wants to be the cool person on the team. And throughout the entire series, his character has a whole story arc where he basically starts to take charge and starts to become more confident and stops being so desperate to be the cool guy and becomes a competent sheriff's deputy. And of course, the Ferg has his big 44 Magnum big bore revolver. I'll be shooting my 357 mag here. And I'm assuming he has a round in every chamber. So he's probably carrying six rounds here. Sometimes you do five and leave it on an empty chamber. That's kind of an old school way to do it. They're much more safe now, but he's gonna have six rounds. The hammer's gonna be down. He's gonna pull it out. He also has a very good duty holster as well. So he'll unholster his weapon, go on target, pull the hammer back, and then take care of the problem. And now for the wild card. So I told you there's a wild card here, and that is concerning the firearm used in the very first episode. So this is gonna be a spoiler alert for the first episode if you've not watched it. The very first episode, the killer is using a Springfield trapdoor chambered in 4570 government. Now, the whole premise of the, of the video or of the, the first episode is the fact that they recover a 4570 slug, which is a massive bullet out of a body. And the, the local firearms expert says, oh, well, that is from a 4570 government round. Per that same expert, the 4570 government can only be fired out of a antique rifle and they're only single shot. There's no other options out there. He also mentions to the sheriff that it takes about five seconds to reload a trapdoor rifle, which becomes very important later on while Walt Longmire is running from cover to cover, you know, from behind trees and bushes or whatever. And he's counting one, two, three, four, five, and then a fire, you know, then it's fired at. Then he has five seconds before he needs to hide again. So he's making his way to safety. The problem with that is that's all fake. That's all wrong. <laughs> I personally have bought a rifle that I can reload way faster than five seconds that fires the 4570 government round. Now it is a single shot rifle, granted. Also, Marlin makes a lever action rifle, you know, that you can just pump through that's chambered in 4570. Now I can't remember if it holds four or five rounds in that tubular magazine, but it's a lot more than single shot. And lastly, I personally have an AR-15 chambered in 458 SOCOM. And just so happens, the 458 SOCOM utilizes the exact same bullet that also goes into the 4570 government cartridge. So technically, with a standard capacity magazine, you can put 10 rounds in there and put 10 rounds on target as quick as you can pull the trigger. So they're a firearms expert, I would not really call an expert. Well, guys, here for me today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like and go subscribe. A lot more is on the way. If you want to watch the Longmire TV show and you've not seen it yet, it is available, I believe, on Netflix, maybe on Amazon Prime, of course, on DVD, and it's being still broadcast on the, uh, on the normal TV stations as well. So go ahead and take a look at that if you've not seen it yet. If you watch my channel, you will love this show, I promise you. As always, you guys have a great day. See ya.